day, everybody. I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani. Thanks for starting your day the KUAM way. You are watching a crime time, and we are in the village of Mingilau, um along our Marine. This is University of Guam Drive. Uh, we're here with the Guam Police Department, along with Mingilau Mayor Alan Ngata. Uh, we broke the story last night about a group of. Uh, young men, about four to five, that according to one of the victims, former Senator Judy Guthard, she was driving, she was leaving campus, and all of a sudden, a group of young men came out of uh, nowhere, an apartment area, and started attacking several cars with machetes. And so, we hadn't had a chance to speak with uh, the police department of, you know, what exactly happened, and Paul, if you could tell us, you know, from, from GPD, uh, what did happen yesterday? So around 4.30 yesterday uh, afternoon, officers from the uh, Ganya Precinct Command received information of a disturbance that was occurring at Bess Store in Mingila. So that's okay. across the street over here. Okay, let's go ahead and walk while we're uh, talking During the about course it. of the uh, disturbance, it was later identified that uh, a male, 19-year-old male, um, was actually yielding a machete and actually swung and attacked a uh, what we're looking at as a family member. Uh, the disturbance happened in the parking lot um, as he swung the machete. He actually struck the uh, individual, which caused lacerations in his abdomen area. Now, what had happened after that was he had left the parking lot area and began, I guess, a car traveling along uh, University Drive. So we have a total of seven cars that were reported to the Guam Police Department, seven individuals that reported that their cars were uh, maliciously damaged by uh, two individuals uh, during the course of uh, that 19 year old male attacking the uh, the, the cars and the that were traveling here another individual uh, 25 year old male actually came out from nowhere and began he actually joined the fray and he was also attacking cars that were traveling uh, along University Drive now as uh, police arrived the individuals fled now with the help of the uh, the victims and witnesses that were here, we were able to locate and identify the responsibles. Um, I believe a uh, 19 year old, uh, stop by a sec, let me get my. That 19 year old was identified as um, Emmanuel Resselep, was located, and 25 year old um, Emmanuel uh, Rechelep was also located with the help of the witnesses and, of course, the victims. Now, Mr. Resselet was charged with aggravated assault, uh, assault with a deadly weapon, family violence, and criminal mischief. Now, the criminal mischief is from the attack of the vehicles or damaging the vehicles. Mr. Rechelup, Rechelup was also uh, arrested and charged for public drunkenness, disorderly, con uh, disorderly con uh, conduct, and of course, um, criminal mischief. He was, again, criminal mischief was, the incident in which he was actually attacking the cars and everything. Now, the victim that was assaulted by the machete was uh, subsequently transported to Guam Memorial Hospital for, uh, you know, treatment and care for for his wounds that he sustained. Now, again, this is this is an incident that is pretty much um, highlighted throughout the community, and we want to stress that this incident is really um, what started as a, as a disturbance in the parking lot ended up here can be attributed to uh, many of many of different things to include emotion, rage, and of course anger and stuff. And um, Mr. Rechelup, the individual that joined in the fray, was also charged with public drunkenness. So we can also say that alcohol may be a factor with his uh, decision in 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 in, in, uh, in moving forward with the uh, assault of the cars that were traveling. So uh, you're just you're saying there's only two people have been arrested. Yes. And as you understand, there were only three. You there said? were there was three individuals, that, and this is coming from the investigate uh, the officers that were that actually were on scene and stuff. So this this gives us uh, a better picture of what had happened. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of uh, different 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 uh, dynamics that are happening. You have a disturbance that happened within the park lot, and you have the incident here, and you, you of course have a guy yielding a machete and everything and fleeing the scene. So um, our officers identified three individuals. One was the victim and two were the actual perpetrators who were a part of the assault. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so were they booked and confined or yes. BNR? Okay. Yes, they were booked and confined. And uh, again, this, this every every confinement, every booking or any, any arrest that is made by the Guam Police Department all arrests are forwarded to the Office of the Attorney Generals for prosecution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that uh, Senator Guthards had mentioned was that, you know, these people need to, uh, 
be locked up, not just booked and released. And so um, one of the officers, she said when she asked, um, so what's going to happen now? And they said, well, they'll probably out, be out of jail by, by tomorrow. Is that something that you guys often see? Well, you know, I, I, I'm not going to really expound on, on, on any incidents or any uh, decisions that's made from other agencies to include our law enforcement partners. You know, um, we do the reporting part of, of any case or any criminal act. Um, you know, we hold it upon the uh, Office of the Attorney General, of course, to get the conviction. And that's, that's where we work closely with the Office of the Attorney General. But you got to understand there's rights to due process. Everybody has rights to due process. Whether the courts see, uh, see it differently, it's really uh, incumbent upon the judge's decision on what happens after that. But it's, it's the decision whether, you know, the, the punishment is fit for the crime and everything. So, you know, we still have to respect every individual's rights to due process. We do our part. We do our due diligence in making sure that we garnish the conviction. We work closely with the Office of the Attorney General to get that conviction, whether it be, uh, you know, a sentence with uh, the maximum sentence that we can get or whether we be a plea out from the defendant because we know that we did our part in, in, in ensuring that uh, justice is served to the victim. Now, whether um, is the decision of the courts, again, I can't expound on where uh, the court's decision is going to lie with any other, any of the cases in which the Guam Police Department uh, is the author of any reporting um, incidents that happen within this beautiful island of Guam. Right, but there are a lot of people who probably do not feel feel safe right now. I mean, just looking at some of the comments that we that we have on um, our stream, uh, people are saying, stay safe, arm yourself, Guam, arm and protect yourself. It's getting crazy. You know, um, I, it, you know, it's funny how you, how you mentioned that. I just did an interview uh, just before I got here, and one of the comments that was made was the, the act of uh, vigilante and stuff. And this is where we at the Guam Police Department are asking the people not to take up the act of vigilante approach. Take up the act of being vigilant. When we say arm yourself, I like that I like that phrase. Arm yourself by being aware of what you can do to prevent crimes from happening to you. You know, I mean, it's really, um, we'll take this situation, we'll take every situation that happens, and we should learn from every situation that happens so that we can take preventive measures in ourselves. Because, you know, we can all do our part. The Guam Police Department, and I want to assure that, you know, Chief Ignacio, uh, with the assistance with, uh, you know, the, the administration, the, the Leon Guerrero Tenori administration, is providing us the, you know, the, the, the resources in which we are going to see uh, more officers coming out. But we're asking the community to, you know, arm yourself with the knowledge of what you can do the right way by being aware, understanding situations and what you can do to prevent these situations from happening. And by, you know, us making comments that we're going to take a vigilante approach, we want to stray away from that because that's not the right thing to do. That really isn't, um, you know, awareness is key and understanding what you can do to help the community is where we want to focus on and continue to drive the message. So what can someone do when they're in that sort of a situation and you're driving and then all of a sudden some people come out with machetes and start attacking your car? You, you have every what, right. What can you do? You have every right to defend yourself. We understand that part, right? But in a situation like that, if you had the opportunity to escape and evade, you know, take that approach. If you have an opportunity to provide the information to be the person to dial 911, to be our 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 our, our go by or somebody who can give us the information of what's happening in real time, that is what you can do. Um, if you see a situation, do you drive straight into it? Because we we tend to get tunnel vision. You know, if something happening, um, let's use our observation skills to see what we can do either to avoid that situation from happening or do we continue towards that situation. It's unfortunate that some situations that happen, it catches us off guard. But what do you do when in that situation should approach you where you're caught off guard? What is your escape mechanism? How do you prepare for that? It really is you developing those type of mechanism. And this is the time where we st should start talking about situations in which we can actually protect ourselves, situations in which we can actually avoid any confrontation in which we can get into. Because, um, you know, if we see that the confrontation is getting violent, what can we do to avoid it? Rather than getting physical, rather than getting violent. It really is, you know, it's unfortunate that it happened. Um, seven cars is a lot, but really, um, you know, it's 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 what we can do as 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 a citizen in which we can actually protect ourselves. Okay, what if someone who has a, a concealed firearms, right, and they were in the car and uh, they're being attacked with a machete, would they be in their in their right to pull out the gun and protect themselves? So somebody with a concealed firearm, it really is. They have they have to really um, 
they they go through a process in in in, in getting a concealed firearm. Now we're we're, we're talking hypothetical, right? Um, in the event that you are a concealed firearm holder or even an open carry uh, firearm, you have to understand what you're doing or the magnitude that you have in protecting yourself. That's where you actually um, go to the courses in which uh, it's recommended by obtaining a concealed firearm or a, uh, a gun permit in itself and how you're supposed to protect yourself. There's laws that governs in which you can actually utilize um, some sort of defense mechanism in, in the event where it calls for life and death. Now, these are hypothetical questions again. And it's really, um, what, what can we do? It's really educating yourself in what steps you have to take. Now, we're not just gonna give concealed firearms out to, the, to any, uh, any, any individual who had requests. There's a slew of background investigation. There has to be a reason why you wanna carry a concealed firearm. You have to, we have to make sure that the individual who's carrying a concealed firearm knows exactly when and when he can actually utilize that in the event for safety reasons. And again, we're talking hypothetical. These are things in which we make sure that, well, because we're the issuance of concealed firearms, we go through a slew of background investigation, we go through a slew of understanding that before we give you that permit, there's have, there has to be an understanding that you know what you're going to do. Now, um, we do have the, the mayor here with us, Mr. Ngato. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, this area. Is it known to be um, you know, a, a violent, a high criminal area? Well. You know, prob problematically, what presents itself is you got a store, you got a jungle area. So, of course, like I, uh, I get calls during the days and sometimes in the evening about these, as small as this may be, area where they easily obtain alcohol, go into the jungle, and probably consume it. But for the most part, uh, you know, being vigilant and if it, my constituents calling in and us coming and trying to break up the crowd before it gets any any worse is, is what we try to do. Yeah, and you, you know, I was talking to Ron uh, from Ron's Diner over the phone just a few minutes ago, and he was telling me about um, some of the things that you guys have been doing. You've been putting up signs. He's been making you aware that, you know, there have been people loitering. There's illegal dumping. And you even mentioned that um, you can see... Yes. You can see uh, uh, people who are loitering and some of the things that you've been doing by putting up signs. Yes. Well... I would I would stress uh, that that you know that that if you own these particular lands, you take an active role too. Maybe fence it up, put some no trespassing signs, and and prohibit those different pockets of uh, avenue, uh, areas where people can congregate and, yeah, and consume alcohol, here, right? of course. And as you here. can see, uh, <clears throat> we recently just removed the junk car from this area, University Drive, that was was also put in uh, literally left here and. Uh, was never removed, and uh, we removed it recently just for the Relay for Life and all the congratu uh, graduation. graduation functions that been going on. So, you know, I, I, I really access the, to the people, and like I said, we need to sit down, come together, get all these stakeholders, and, and uh, come to a table and sit and, and discuss these issues. And uh, I hate to see it where it becomes between uh, different ethnic groups. Let's keep it, let's keep it the way we are, we're, you know. We're, 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 all, we're, all, we're all civil people, and there's, there's dialogue that could, the positive dialogue that can come out of this. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I want to commend Mayor, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Ngato for, for, for his comments and everything. You know, it really is, uh, you know, the dialogue is important. And, you know, we have come uh, in stride with, with what's going on within the community by establishing dialogue. Because if we take everything from a knee-jerk reaction and we're going to do this because of this is what happened, it first really does need to start with dialogue. And I want to commend the mayor because, you know, by populace, it really, he has, I think, by, uh, you know, geographic and, of course, the, the, the populace in itself, because of the schools, because of uh, the different diversity he has, he has to understand the importance of dialogue. And we work closely with them, uh, whether it be a neighborhood watch program, whether it be a youth, uh, youth uh, group initiative, whether it's working with our nonprofit organization. And these are these are the steps in which, these are the, these are the proactive steps in which we have taken with the community and um, it's, it, it's and, and, and again, it's not us versus them, it's what we all need to do from a holistic approach from the community. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that the, uh, the governor actually has called for uh, some sort of an emergency meeting. It's occurring at around 9.30 this morning at Adeloup. She's called in members of the FSM community. I spoke with Senator Clint Rigel. He said uh, he got a call this morning and he's going to be attending that meeting. And also the Mayor's Council of Guam. Uh, Alan, if you could tell me you know, what you, you understand will be discussed. 
I'm not too sure, but I'm ho I'm hoping that uh, it's it's a uh, positive talks and uh, in regards to this issue and and overall all the violence in general. Uh, you know, it's not one particular area. Like I said, every every community has its own flaws. But thank you, Sabrina. And like he said, every community has their own fall, fall, flaws. Uh, on Facebook, Michelle Pierce, she posted it about another incident uh, that occurred in Agate, near the Agate Marina. And, you know, I also spoke with the, the mayor, uh, Mr. Sisuiko, this morning about it. And he woke up. He said that's what he saw. Um, and he's going to be meeting with uh, some of the people down at the Agate Marina to talk about, you know, find out more information about what happened. But from GPD, what can you tell us? I, that's new information to me about what happened to Agua Marina. Um, I'm still tracking what happened at the, uh, what happened here in yeah. Miguelau. But uh, right. you know, rest assured, as that information comes in, you know, we, we we'll work closely in uh, providing the information to the community. Um, you know, it's it really is. You know, um, dialogue is important, and there, you know, this is a time. This is a time where Guam. We're approaching the census. You know, we're going to be coming in 2020. We're going to take the census. This is a time for Guam to realize that Guam has come in, in, in the dynamics of culture and everything. Guam has come in full stride of who we can actually identify, where we can identify, identify ourselves as true Guamanians. Whether you, you're, you're a migrant family from from the FSM, whether you choose to uh, live with, uh, live on this beautiful island to establish some, uh, you know, uh, whether it be uh, economic growth or status and everything, whether it be through education, this is where we come in. This is where we all come in as 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 a, as a whole in addressing the social ills that we're facing. And you know, when 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 things happen, it's it's really we're not taking a knee-jerk reaction. We're taking a proactive approach, and we all we we still. We need to continue that stride in a proactive approach. And you know, you've seen our programs in which we've, we've done, you've seen the programs in which we reach out to the mayor's council, where we reach out to the schools. It really is bringing the community together. And some of these things, you know, unfortunately, it really gets, I, I don't want to use the word blown out of proportion, but it did, it did happen. And we're not going to ignore the fact that it did happen, okay? But we need to continue to work at bringing that dialogue to the table and establishing where we can actually meet with, you know, uh, community-based organization, uh, faith-based organization, nonprofit organization to continue this dialogue. Because I can honestly tell you, in the last 20 years, we've actually picked up momentum and we've actually reached out to, um, you know, our FSM families and understanding, uh, you know, where, you know, where we all fit in as Guamanians within this beautiful island. All right. and any final, final comments from you, Mayor? I just want to commend uh, GPD and Men in Blue. And they do a, they do a, an awesome job. And like they said, we all can't be at one place at one time. So generally, there there is a lot of uh, advocation going on there, education. And even as uh, Mayor Tapao had said earlier, I've I've also seen those those individuals come out and out of their busy schedule to sit down in a class and explain uh, different uh, areas of uh, safety and uh, concerns on and express the what what's needed if you see something say something and advocate for something good and that, that will come out in the community as a whole all right well this has been um our latest episode of mm -hmm. prime time uh, make sure to follow uh more on this story tonight on prime time uh, chris barnett he'll be at that meeting up at adeloop again we'll have more tonight at six thanks for watching Stay safe. Yes, sir.